<clears throat> All right, hey, what's up, guys? So, this has been an interesting little development. I'm sure most of you probably know who uh, David Shitrat is. And it appears that um, his, his girlfriend, <laughs> if you can call her that, has returned to Twitter. Now look, I'm not under any delusions here. This appears a little bit too convenient to me for it to be real. I think it might be our our fa <laughs> our favorite role player, our favorite Twitter role player there, Mister Mister Spino. I think it could be him. There's a pretty good chance of that. But if it isn't, the responses that I've been getting, I think are are interesting. Well, first let me um, let's let's check out what she's been saying on Twitter. So uh, we have Wild Smiled here, Where's the Money, David? And conveniently, she jumps in to the replies with, It went to help me. If you have a problem with that, that is too bad. You have no care for what is happening in the world, nor do you know what it is like with your life in danger for being a woman, atheist, and ex-Muslim in an Islamic country. You only care about hurting people. Now, how hardcore atheist, or how... <laughs> Islamic, my mistake, is uh, Qatar. Because I I wasn't under the impression that it was that insane there. I mean, look, I, I could be completely off base. But I didn't think it was that crazy. Um, maybe if somebody knows in, in the chat, you can let me know. But even if it was, what I find very curious, or what, what I've always found very curious about this situation... Uh, hey, Kat, how's it going? Uh, hey, everybody else, I, you know, I'd get to you all individually, but we'd be here forever. <laughs> um, what has always been strange about this situation and why I never believed for a second, even from the beginning when everybody was donating to this person, that this was real, was because I, I'm not sure how many people remember this, but she had a YouTube channel that she used to make videos on talking if you're worried about being exposed, why would you make YouTube videos where you had your voice in the video? Why would you do that? Wouldn't you be worried that your family is going to find out what you're doing online? And they would hear what you're saying in those videos? If you're really scared for your life, scared for your, uh, you know, in, in fear of what your parents would do to you. That's absolute bullshit. Why would you do that? Furthermore, she also had an Instagram account in which she posted photos of at least from, I, I want to say like from the bridge of her nose up, you know, so you could see like the top of her head and her eyes, basically. In addition to that, I remember a specific photo, and maybe it's weird that I remember this, but I, I remember looking into it because I just thought it was so strange that nobody was questioning this, or at least nobody in, in the circle that I was you know, on the outside of looking in, they all kind of just bought it like, oh, we're saving a, the poor ex, uh, ex-Muslim ex atheist woman. And once you get into that mindset where you think you're being a hero and you kind of stop questioning things and, you know, you just blindly throw money at it because you think you're doing something to save somebody, it's kind of where you lose me. So the other Instagram post that I remember is a photo of a Sam Harris book. Now, I don't remember the title of it, but it's my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but isn't Sam Harris an atheist? So, why would you... Why would you have that book? Or at the very least, I think he's critical of... Um, religions... Maybe I'm, maybe I'm off base there. I haven't listened to much Sam Harris. But anyway, the point is, what would you be doing with that book in your home? Where your parents are? Where they can supposedly discover you at any moment? Your true beliefs? Why would you do that? If you're so scared for your life, 
if you're worried that at any moment you're going to die because you don't have the same faith as your family. I mean, this is, this is absurd. So, um, I did choose to... <laughs> people are saying, hello, David, which is hilarious because it could very well be true. Um, let me find where I replied. Okay, so, I replied to this. You're not in danger. You're an absolute fraud. You had a YouTube channel, an Instagram account, and this Twitter. If you were at such risk of being exposed, you wouldn't have posted half the shit you did. Cough up the cash, psycho. And I said, you know, in case the bitch deletes, here's what I'm replying to. So I, here's the replies I get. Here's the big brain intellectual responses that I get. You're a sick, sad individual. <laughs> and you're a lying bitch. Why don't you go post some more YouTube videos where your voice can be easily recognized and some Sam Harris books you wouldn't have in your house if your parents were against you. Uh, so apparently that means I need help. Um, I said, you need to get better at scamming, sandwich. Uh, then I get, I'm concerned for your blood pressure. Call me when you live here. Your life is on the line and you don't sit on a throne of privilege and comfort. I don't care if you don't believe me or like what I say. This is real life and your petty drama is not my problem. So I said, your life must not be worth much to you with how poor of a job you've done to keep it safe. I think you care quite a bit. You're in full damage control mode. Which, I mean, if you look at her page, for somebody who doesn't care about what people are saying, what, what these privileged individuals are saying about her life. Interesting. Uh, let, let's see. So it started, look at this. Why is it your business? Uh, I love the, I love the, where's the money, David meme. Oh, it's so fucking good. I got to save that. Uh, did you donate? Why does it matter if other people got ripped off? It, it doesn't matter if she donated or not. Uh, considering the money was raised to help me. <laughs> I love how everybody's doing hi, David. That's so great. Uh, there's the replies to me. Went to me and it was used for the purpose for which it was procured. You don't have a say in it. So if it was used to help her, why is she still in danger? Isn't that interesting? She has no followers and she's claiming to be someone. Yeah, you know, I think I, I'm pretty sure that this is bullshit. I'm... I'm I can't be a hundred percent sure, but it sounds like, uh, it really does sound like it's, it's David on damage control here trying to just, you know, be like, oh, well here she is. And, and the, the money went to her. So there's no proof of it. Who are you? I don't owe you anything. Many people came together to help me. I received the money and I used it to help me. David was really great. We didn't work out the end. <laughs> Come on, David, this is even below you, man. You think anyone is going to buy this? Duncan, Idaho, you are, you are hilarious. Not even entertaining you at this point, even though she's replying. It is quite clear I exist and have this entire time. Okay, so she does obviously exist. There was a girl involved here at some point. Like I said, I remember a YouTube channel. I remember the Instagram accounts. There were other, other social media accounts corroborating the existence of this person. Now, look, I, I don't remember 100% here, but I almost want to say that um, in the YouTube videos, the person that spoke didn't really have a foreign accent, which, hmm, that's awfully interesting, isn't it? Join today and has 13 tweets. It's David. He's fucking, he, this, this kid is sick in the head. I mean, it very well could be him. This was her, um, at account that disappeared at one point. I'm pretty sure this was what her ad account used to be. A uh, user handle. But look at this. Come on now. Why Why would... If she's an ex-Muslim, why would she be... Uh, why would she be advertising this? Why would, why would you do that? It doesn't really make any sense at all. There, and, and the fact that people bought into this is just absolutely mind-boggling that, you know, nobody questioned it. Nobody went after their money. That I remember. I don't remember anybody asking for um, a refund or anything like that. Maybe maybe there were some people who did and they just didn't come forward. Um, that's, that's entirely possible. But I don't remember any big stink kicked up about it except for when uh, V investigated into it a little bit. I don't quite remember what the outcome of that uh, investigation was because it was quite a while ago, but I don't remember having a satisfying answer because 
the woman that he spoke with on the stream was that Haram Harambe desserts or whatever they call her for uh, for entertainment value. And that woman is well, she seems mentally unstable. Anybody that switches ideology more than they change their underwear, you got this person that's, oh, I'm ex-Muslim. I'm also ex-Mormon. Like, well, what do you do? Just join cults and, uh, you know, never think for yourself at all? Now, I'm not saying if you have some sort of faith, you automatically don't think for yourself. You don't misinterpret that. But if you have a propensity for joining, uh, you know, group after group after group and never really being solid in your own identity, there is clearly something that you are lacking. And it's just like David. David started out as an MRA online. He used to make MRA videos. Then he was MGTOW. Then, <laughs> after the uh, Lauren Southern debacle, he went more progressive, social justice, and now he hangs out with that crowd. So it just seems to me like somebody desperate for online relevancy who doesn't really have a worldview of their own and kind of just jumps on whatever trend thinks, you know, he thinks is going to get him there. Hell, I trust Mormons more than Muslims. At this point, ex-Muslims are worse than Muslims. <laughs> yeah, look, I think the whole um, being ex-something or anti-something as your identity is really just as silly as, you know, the people that walk around and use their, I'm a, I'm a social justice warrior for their identity. It's, you know, it's there should be more to you than what you oppose or what you used to be. I understand that they kind of advertise the label to, you know, kind of signal to other people. I do, I do get the purpose, but that doesn't mean I don't think it is ridiculous. Desperate for validation, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I really don't... I don't understand. Is anybody buying this? I mean, I see a lot of people giving her shit, so that's a plus. And the funny thing is now, um, if you go to... Let me find it. David's profile. Uh, he retweeted somebody that posted 49 minutes ago, so he's sort of around, right? The last reply he did was 53 minutes ago. You have to wonder. Because she popped up an hour ago. Don't you think... Don't you think that's uh, a little bit strange? That right around the time that he disappears from Twitter, the, uh, the sand wench appears? It's a little too convenient, right? I mean... You gotta try harder, man. You guys are just, like, awful scammers. This is the worst attempt I've ever seen. You should read the post from Sherrod's old account, Spinosaurus Kin, from Autism Forums. I believe I've seen those a long time ago. Um, if you... Yeah, if you want to send them to me, go ahead, send send them over, and I'll, um, I'll pull them up, and we can at least take a look at that, because... This is this is really what I just wanted to like jump on here and talk about real quick. So we could go for, you know, maybe like an hour or something like that depending. Cuz I don't think I don't think this is going to stretch out for an hour. Um and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to waste your guys time kind of just uh giving giving off this little rant about this crap. But it's funny. I I don't care. I don't care if any of you people believe me responds to absolutely everybody that says she's faking. Because, <laughs> you know, the clearest sign of not caring about something is replying to everybody that's criticizing you, right? I mean, you wouldn't, if you didn't care, you wouldn't just move on with your day. You wouldn't just uh, try to stay safe in your um, your world. This is great. All right, let's see what else is going on here. Atheist, everything past deism is, deism is autism, dear. <laughs> it's funny for you because you have never had your life in danger for not believing. You only know privilege. I love this. I love this privilege bullshit. Wait, she never existed. It was always David wanting to scam money out of people to use for his training transition. Uh, Fash, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there definitely was a girl involved at some point. Now, I'm not saying that she is who they presented her as, 
But there was a YouTube channel where the person, you know, spoke. Uh, so there was, there was definitely a girl. But whether that person was actually somebody whose life was in danger, I highly doubt it. I think that m most likely um, David got taken by somebody. And rather than... This is just a theory, you know, I can't, I can't prove this. And rather than coming forward and coming clean and embarrassing himself online, even though that's no, you know, <laughs> he's no stranger to embarrassing himself online, I think he covered it up and, you know, said they broke up. And now maybe he's back? Right? I mean, that's... Especially given the time discrepancies here. Yeah, and if I was, I wouldn't be stupid enough to own a, open a YouTube channel to talk about it. If you were in real danger, you have to be the dumbest person I've come across in a long time. Exactly. You judge if you know what it like. The desperation. Tell me again what it's like over here and how you know all about my situation. It has got to, it has got to an interesting life being as egotistical, ignorant, and smug as you are. Smug as you are, why well, thank you. <laughs> Get to it, babe. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> all right, I'll check the Twitter DMs and we'll pull it up. Just give me a sec here. Um, I don't appear to have received anything. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't see them yet. Maybe there's like some sort of delay or something. I've never experienced that on Twitter, but we'll wait a couple of minutes and I'll check back. Yeah, this just smells a little bit too um, damage control to me. And, you know, people remember. People remember the YouTube account. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that if you... Um... What is the accent in the video? You mean when, when she spoke on YouTube? I don't remember one. Um, that's the thing. I don't remember an accent. Like maybe, maybe I'm just misremembering because it was years ago now that I listened to the videos, but I, I honestly don't remember one, which, you know, would sort of break the narrative. Um, I'm not really sure. You know what pisses me off? There are legitimately people that are scared for being gay or want to leave the Muslim faith, but assholes like this just make shit worse. Yeah, it's a little bit ridiculous. I, I can't stand it when people try to play the victim card and then it turns out that they're not even victims in the first place. I mean, it's bad enough that, that being a victim of something has sort of become sort of a, uh, a meme at this point, if you will, just because of how many people have, who have abused the term. Hey, Jack, what's up? Yeah. It's weird because she was only active three days after David got shot on by Medicare. It's extremely weird. Now, I'm sure their excuse is going to be something like, well, she just came back to clarify because she didn't want David getting shit. And it's like, yeah, all right. All right, I believe that. This whole privilege thing is amazing to me. Everyone else is privileged. Everyone is privileged. Everyone but me. Everyone but me is privileged. Okay, I see the message, but I'm going to open them up in the other window just because, you know... Wait, what's going on? Twitter, you're being weird. Huh. Yeah. That's not the message. I actually got a DM from somebody else. Let me cut this for a sec. What was your name over there in the chat? Um... Let me scroll up here. Slavier, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get anything. I don't know why. Um, I'm not sure what else to suggest. I guess if it, if the DMs don't work, you could send to uh, scratchpoint at hotmail dot com. That's an alternative. I'm, I'm not doubting you, but. Uh, for whatever reason, I just haven't received it. I keep refreshing the page and it's not there. So this is the girl that got all that money and disappeared. Well, supposedly. Um, you know, I'm I'm not really buying it given the timing. I mean, if you, if you look at when this person appeared, 
it, it looks like she appeared online right around when <laughs> right around when uh, David got offline. I mean, you'd think if he was really trying to um, give off this illusion of both of them existing at the same time, that he would have he would have kept himself active as well, like went back and forth between accounts or something. But no, just go full on one account and pretend you walked away from the computer. You know, maybe he's out. Maybe he's out picking picking boulders with mundane Matt. They could have just split the money 50-50 too. I mean, yeah, that's an entirely a possibility. You know, it, it regardless of whatever happened to the money, um, you know, it's just wrong that there's been no information of what happened to it, no trail. Even if it was used for the purposes that it was intended, which I highly doubt because if so, she would be out of the country and not here bitching about oppression. When you make a, a GoFundMe like that, you really need to inform the people that donated. Put out some kind of proof. Whether you do it directly or the person that collected the money for you, somebody should be doing that. Basically, it comes down to showing the receipts because there's far too many people online who, who take advantage of these sort of things. We talked about one uh, a couple of streams ago. I think last stream I gave the update on it where it was the person that was saying they got outed uh, to their parents as gay and the parents were religious and they kicked him out. You know, they hopped on Twitter, a brand new account, collected $4,500 and ran away. And then they closed the account. Now, I don't know if they got away with the money. Maybe they were able to get him refunded. But that's absolutely insane. Maybe that's what the boulders are for, her stoning. <laughs> oh, oh no. Where's the money shit, Rat? It's hilarious that that's basically become a thing now. I'm I'm shocked that it took this long, but I am I am happy to see it uh just added you to the Twitter. Okay, let's see. There we go. Holy crap, there's a lot of these. Alright, we'll do one at a time. So this is number one. Are all these posts his or no? Like alright, so it just links directly to his answers. My opinion is, what else could it be? My parents made the assumption that I would grow out of my behaviors as gave them the comfort of thinking they could change me. It was the most harmful thing that ever came out of their minds. I was put into the public school system. Teachers hated my lack of organization, and I was outcasted as weird. I say that even if it is something different, you actually took the initiative to search. My mother would take the opinion of a dietitian if it was what she wanted to hear, which was, your son's just an immature asshole. Glad you didn't make the same mistake. Oh. He's got, he's got, got, a, got some family issues. I think this might go on the Ralph retort tonight. Oh yeah, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. His Arab princes talk off with the Nigerian prince. Yeah, and it just turns out that all the donators were the Nigerians in this case, which is sad. I mean, this was boosted. Um, I think this was even boosted by by Breitbart when it hit. And I, I get it. They kind of did it for good PR for like the GamerGate stuff, but. That's not a reason to jump on this sort of thing. Well, let me say this. You people are more relatable with online text than I have felt in the almost 17 years I've spent on this forsaken planet. I've always been the odd one out. I felt that I didn't fit in with others very easily. Tried to work out what I was missing. I watched some TV, which got me through primary school, but I was outcasted the minute I got into, ele or got into secondary school. I've always felt detached, and now I've found out why. It has made more sense to me. I do have moments where I feel I'm not really there and seem to daze out really often. Animals are easier than people by a long shot because it is, it is easy to know how they feel, especially dogs. Tail wagging equals happy. Tail not wagging equals problem. Most likely bored. Um, or it just means, you know, normal state of being. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean a problem. I mean, if a dog's... <laughs> I think it'd be more of a problem if a dog's tail never stopped wagging. Like, even when he's sleeping, the shit's just going back and forth. Come on. Social interaction and, and just the presence of people really tires me out and seems to have gotten worse over time. So it really tires him out, but he uh, he never <laughs> he never takes a break from Twitter interactions, huh? Well, except for when he's pretending to be other people. Uh, it seems to have gotten worse over time. Maybe we're aliens. Who cares about the cause? I want to solve it. Even my friends, of which two of them are on the spectrum, are starting to seem distant. 
I push away my parents because the last time they tried to help me, they tried to fix me with a half-assed lesson on respect, blind allegiance, and it almost drove me to suicide. My brother is starting to turn against me, and the lesbian girl I stupidly fell in love with is beginning to dislike me. Yeah, I feel like I'm different. I'm the only one who can't solve my own problems. Absolutely ridiculous. It... I mean, this just sounds like an awkward teenager. I don't remember the story about the lesbian girl, though. That's... That's hilarious. Perpetually vibrating dog. Once again, Shitrat has no clue what he's talking about. Yeah, you know, the thing that always blew my mind, even back when he was on the quote-unquote right side of opinions... I never thought this dude's content was any good. I never thought he made good arguments. All he did was autistically call everything a logical fallacy. <laughs> like, who gives a shit, Mr. Pseudo-Intellectual? And, and people actually liked this crap. You know, they acted like he was the prodigal son of, of the MRA community. I mean, I understand that, that people love things that, that confirm their biases, but just because something someone stands for the same cause that, that you do, it doesn't mean that they're good at what they do. It doesn't mean that they're worth listening to. It doesn't... You know, he has the right to speak, obviously, but I never thought it was worth listening to. He always goes for these girls that are a lost cause from the get-go. Stephen, quiet before you have Kraut calling you up to adopt the dog. All right, so... Let's go on here. This crap is what I get from my parents whenever I bring it up. It really makes me wonder how much they know or care about me. My, uh, my mother, who is always flip-flopping on the whole idea of me being autistic, believed that an autistic person can't cry. What the... Asterisks? <laughs> if you excuse my arbitrarily bad language, which he censored, that was the point where I lost all respect for my mother's opinion on the matter. My parents wanted to label me as just an immature little kid because that was changeable. Strangely, kids at my school are more accepting than my parents. I go to a grammar school, and I'm currently in sixth form, and most people there are pretty understanding about the whole thing. There is some level of issue when I suspect my friends, but one of them knew about it before me, so he's clear. The other friend is on the border. So build a wall, but it has the most noticeable quirk, so it confuses me as to why they think that he has the lowest likelihood. Oh well, maybe my unprofessional opinion is not enough. You think... But nobody shall dispute I have the symptoms, and that means I have the condition. Simple, really. I'm going to take a quick sip of water here. All this reading is uh, starting to wear on me. <laughs> Everything shit rat does is arbitrarily bad. I just defaulted to calling him shit rat, which I think is funny. Um... The thing that I don't like about these types of things, like I know conditions come with symptoms and, and, and issues that, that maybe you can't fully overcome, but I'm tired of this idea, and I, we spoke about this a little bit last stream, I'm tired of this idea that a label, and a label alone, suddenly just means that you're automatically incapable, you know? Obviously it d depends on the circumstance, but... I'm really getting tired of that excuse. It, it seems like everything now is something that automatically prevents a person from doing anything. Like that anxiety post where the girl was like, people shouldn't have to do any type of public speaking if they don't feel comfortable with it because they have anxiety. And it's like, well, all right, look, I mean, anxiety sucks, but that doesn't mean that you physically can't do it. It's just that you are extremely adverse to it because of the feelings that it gives you. What do you think of Sargon asking Jim to fight him IRL? It's funny, but I mean, it's, um, it's a little ridiculous. I mean, first of all, I think he said it because he knows it's never going to happen. You know, Jim, um, seems to value his anonymity and I don't think he's going to give it up for some stupid YouTuber fight, you know? Well, then I got some some notifications here on the side. Oh, okay, these are just subscribers, so welcome, guys. That's that's nice. Oh, let's see if anything popped up. No, nothing else popped up on Twitter. I wonder if she gave up arguing with people. Let's see. 
Nope. Just the uh, desperation and smug arguments. I would like it to happen, but I know there's too many problems with Jim taking him up on the offer. I mean, I, I kind of feel like this whole thing is... The whole thing is silly. The whole the whole thing of them arguing with each other in the first place is pretty silly. I don't... Like, I'm, I think the jokes that, you know, that have come from it are, are funny as hell, but I don't really see any um, value in it other than that. I mean... Uh, you know, a lot a lot of people are, are laughing about uh, Sargon. He seems to have a little bit of an air of self-importance. But I, I mean, I guess at, at the end of the day, regardless of what people think, you know, he, you know, he's doing something that he seems to believe in. I, I don't know how far that's going to get him. But it is what it is. Um, so really, the thing that I find stupid about it is that, you know... And this is my problem with a lot of these guys, is that they pretend to be above the drama when they don't want to get involved in something, uh, or when they don't want to address something, but then somebody will, you know, say something to piss them off, and, and then they're right back in it. So it's like, you should just, if you really mean what you say, and I understand shit gets annoying when people are needling at you constantly, but if you really mean what you say, and you feel like you're doing something so much more important, you gotta try to stay above the shit. The value of seeing Sargon make a fool of himself. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like I said, the jokes that have come out of it are entertaining, but... I don't really... I guess I don't really have that much, uh... I don't have that much against him. Like, I'm not for him, but I'm not... I'm not completely anti just because I don't really pay attention to what he does... Like, I used to, years ago, but like back when the whole Gamergate thing started, I used to listen to his videos now and then, but then it just got kind of repetitive and boring. Like, YouTube, um, This Week and Stupid, you know, it just got really old. I didn't, I didn't care to hear it anymore. And then I was kind of, uh, you know, working on my own stuff and whatnot. He's accomplished nothing that can account for that. Could be cocaine doing it. Jeez, I don't know. That's, that's kind of, that's kind of shitty that, um... You know, he's breaking in those Patreon dollars, and then if something like that came out, that would be awful. Sargon's doing nothing. He doesn't have any draw with anyone outside of the 16 to 25 internet using Autis. You Kip only took him on because they thought it would get the youth. Yeah, I mean, and it. I guess it also sounds... Now, this could just be him, you know, blowing shit up, but uh, it also sounded like they weren't the most technologically savvy group, so I guess... I guess him and, and Dankula sort of fill that role in the sense that just that they're in it, you know. His egotism needs to be checked, but I think it would take a huge and decisive blow to make him realize that he's lost. Otherwise, he'll keep pretending everything is fine, just like Mundane Matt. I think that the more that these guys gain popularity, it becomes harder and harder for them to accept that they're wrong because they want to save face. They don't want to look stupid in front of so many people. I mean, just think of, you know, to, to put it sort of into a smaller scale, I mean, just think of, like, you're, you know, you're back in school or whatever. One of the worst things that kids face is, like, oh, I don't want to be embarrassed in front of the whole class. It's basically that multiplied by, you know, a couple hundred thousand. <laughs> they don't want to be embarrassed in front of the class on YouTube. That's really what it is. It would take a huge blow because he sees his failures as successes. Did Jim groom you? Sorry, I don't have a... I don't have a victim story. Jim should stop being a faggot and attack a Jew even if only wants to prove he's not a Jew himself. <laughs> Alright. That's, uh... That's an interesting take, I suppose. He's doing victory laps for Article 11 and 13 or whatever that shit was called and he fucking lost. Yeah, um... I did look. I did see the humor in the fact that, you know, they um, they met up with the group and then what? Like a day or two later, that shit passes. Cause that that sucks. Um, I was listening to when they were talking about it, like the ramifications of it on the kill stream. And man, that that is just stupid. It's definitely people that, you know, making these laws that that don't really seem to understand 
the full scope of what they're doing. Like they don't write it. They don't write the laws in a way that will account for, um, you know, extenuating circumstances. Like for example, where they were saying, you know, if you are out in public and you take a photo and there happens to be a building in that photo or a bridge, then the architect of that bridge or building could technically sue you for, for using it in the photo. Like that's, that's, to the level of insanity just something that could happen by you know by pure circumstance by accident by coincidence that you can't have it in in the background some of the most retarded legislation that's come around in my lifetime yeah i mean this 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 one really takes the cake i i guess i have to say that uh yeah thank thank god we're not in europe right I just wonder how bad it's going to get because it seems like when you think that <laughs> when you think that they've gone as low as they can go, they somehow sink a little bit lower. Jim Groom's cats, dogs, nineteen year old boys, that's terrible. Oof. The horror. Yet CCTV is up and running. All right, let's let's see if there's any more uh crazy response is going down here. It doesn't look like it. What's Ralph saying? Let's see. I saw a post he made. Oh. I thought he was talking about um, shit rat stuff. Yeah. I should probably stop going back to the main page just in case some <laughs> I I follow some people that that don't really have a much of a posting filter so there's a good chance that I could probably end up getting myself banned. All right, let me see. Have we already looked at the third one? Let's continue down the list a little bit here. I'll just find my friend who has his zombie survival guide and work from there. I guess it depends on the lore of the zombies, e.g. if they can cl What is this? If they can climb easily, learn and think in a cognitive manner, use weapons and running, that's pretty important. We would be the most likely survivors if there were an epidemic, as we are naturally introverted, and so we would be less likely to come into contact with an infected on the streets or at a social gathering. <laughs> zombie apocalypse with only Aspie survivors. Sounds like a good idea for a book. Hmm. You know what? He should have stuck to the book. He should. <laughs> he should have instead of making the, these uh, ridiculous YouTube MRA rants. Let's watch Sargoy's documentary. So you guys want to watch that? You think we could do it without? Is it? It's on his channel. All right. Let's let's check it out. We'll give it a shot. I'm not really subscribed to anybody on this channel because I just kind of threw it together. Sargon of Akkad, BBC for interview. Oh, so he's just, is he going to show it or is he just talking about it? Well, let's see. How's this showing up on the screen? And why am I getting a Ryan Reynolds ad? First, I just dabbled with it, you know? Dude, I don't care. All right. Yeah, folks, right. So I'm just back from the BBC interview that I've done. It lasted all afternoon. I was able to record it on my phone's recorder, and I have about three hours of interview, but I said I wouldn't release it. But what I'll do is, after they release theirs, because they're only going to use four minutes of it, I will ask them if I can release the rest of it. Because I think that was pretty good, actually. I was quite happy with it. And yeah, but what about the way that they're going to edit this? I mean, <laughs> isn't that what usually happens when one of these guys does an interview? They, they end up coming back later after it's released, and they're like, oh, you know, fuck, you took me out of context completely on this. They deleted this. They spliced this. And, you know, they frame it in the worst way possible. I don't foresee uh, BBC being kind, but we'll see. And I'm feeling pretty good about it, which means I'm going to get fucked. <laughs> so the questions were generally quite tame. There was nothing particularly out of the bounds of what I was expecting to hear, of this, expecting to be asked. Um, just basically about what I, my, my conception of liberalism, how it differs from, like, you know, the, the sort of labor and conservative views of the world, how it obviously differs from the alt-right. And I did my best to represent the alt-right correctly because I think that's fair. 
You know, I don't. I mean, I didn't just call them Nazis, but when people call you alt right, that is what they mean. But I, that again, they're only going to use four minutes of this three hours, so I have no idea. I mean, it's not really wrong there. Um, the the format was question, sixty second answer, and then question, sixty second answer. I assume that's so they can take the. I guess it's going to be about four questions that are answered to make the four minutes of roughly of airtime that I'll have. I have no idea what they're going to take. I I think there were some good questions that I gave solid answers to. Like, th- I mean, like things about the way I view the world, and like, and I particularly hope they use the one about UKIP feeling like a, a homespun party because I I really mean that as a massive compliment. I would I would feel that the other. I don't know. I don't want to just like snipe his video. Doesn't really seem like there's much worth responding to yet. Is there like a particular point in here where he gets into something at least a little bit more interesting? Is there an alt center? The alt centrist. There's a there's a label. Other parties are like I don't know. I wouldn't feel well represented by the other party. Parties. I'll go a little bit more. I feel that they're careerist, whereas UKIP doesn't have that feeling, and I mean that to its credit. Um, I hope they use that because I think that'll help encourage people to see it. Instead, I mean, I was I stressed in, in the interview that they're not like a far right party. And, they're going to take uh, the most irrelevant, embarrassing quotes. There was some probing liberalism, but I think I uh, I think I handled that quite well. Hopefully, fingers crossed. You never know; it might be shit. But like I said, I felt, I came away from it feeling pretty good. So <laughs> they're gonna screw me. But no, the the two guys doing it, I can't I can't remember the names. Gareth, I think it was, and someone else. They weren't. I didn't feel that they were being duplicitous, you know. I didn't feel, I didn't get the vibe that they were out to get me or that they were dishonest. And the guy was recommending that I check out his previous work. Yeah, I mean, look, this is completely uninteresting. I, d- <laughs> I have no stake in this Are the at all. dangerous sorts. And I believe if they're left is, in charge of the editing... Why did I see Teal Deer's should like, be okay. icon or whatever? I mean, none of the questions seemed in bad faith. So if the guys were that he that interviewed him were in charge, then he sees no reason. Let's see what the comments say, just to... Ratio is not too bad. Seems to be just people joking so far. Four minutes, you're going to be taken out of context. Most likely. So what you're saying is BBC is fake news. You feel happy about it because you haven't heard the heavily edited version yet. So what you're saying is... That interview was great. You're only taking 57 views from his video of that. Yeah. My channel got totally royally fucked from that that damn strike. I was doing so well before that, that hit. Like, I had... I had like 400. I mean, look, you know, that's probably not a lot to uh, many, many people, but it was a lot for me, and I was I was happy about it. Uh, maybe, you know, I, I feel like I probably should start, um, and I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. I don't know how many people would be for or against it, but I feel like I should start downloading the streams from here and then uploading them in full to the main channel. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. But now I feel kind of stupid doing it because I have like five or six streams on here and I don't want to kind of uh, overdo the uh, the sub feed for people. Maybe I could upload like two a week or something to catch up. I don't know. That might work. I'll think about it. I don't really see anybody shitting on him in here or anything. Uh, Boomer Groomer Jim. There's a joke in his favor, I guess. BBC only needs 30 seconds to assassinate you in public. Well, depending on what kind of BBC we're talking about, and you have a point there. Oh, look, another reply. She's back. Let's see. Okay, I'll play along. What do you hope to gain from this reemergence? Are you back now to defend David, to set the record straight? I'm not interested in defending David except to set the record straight because a lot of good people came together to try to help me. It hurts to see people mocking others in my situation, laughing at those trying to get away from oppressive regimes, societies, and families is low. Again, playing along here, I'll ask one more and leave it. Do you think setting the record straight includes some basic bit of proof that the... Fa- yes, I. it definitely does. It definitely does. You should do the stream alert vids on your main channel, too. Yeah, um, I've been posting the stream alerts. Um... I usually do it... I'll I'll do it in advance when I know I have a stream incoming, but this one was just, like, majorly on the fly because 
of the shit that was going down on, on Twitter at the time that I wanted to talk about. But then I delete them later on, so I don't just leave the um, the alerts up. Like, after I finish this stream, I'll go and delete the current alert just because it becomes irrelevant. I mean, maybe I should leave it. This might as well be an archive channel. Yeah, I guess it I guess it will be once I um once I get the main one back to full capacity. She's been even following David. This is weird. Yeah, this whole this oh not following. Yeah, I mean like if you're legitimate, why not put up proof? I doubt we'll get it. Um, I guess, <laughs> look, I guess if they, if we get it, uh, I guess if we get proof and it's real, you know, legitimate that you could verifiable, I guess I'll, uh, I will say I was wrong, but, um, until then, I, I, I'm very suspicious that this is even real. This fan fiction, yeah, that's good. Whose stream is this? This is the stream of Scratch Point, which is why it was uh, advertised on the Scratch Point channel. Now, you may have subscribed because um, Killstream was there, but this is my stream, uh, so welcome. I missed the first 20 minutes of this. Uh, we started out talking about the reemergence of uh, David's ex-girlfriend. Supposedly her. I really, really doubt it's her just because the timing is convenient. What's her header image on Twitter? Candy? I see uh, cinnamon sticks <laughs> and like an assortment of dried, I don't know, leaves? Grains, maybe? It's weird. It almost looks like they're trying to make a, a potpourri or something. It did look kind of like candy, but upon further inspection, it, it doesn't seem like it is. Yeah, because, I mean, cinnamon sticks are a spice, so maybe these are other spices? Subscribe for Killstream, stayed for Scratch Point. Hey, thanks, I appreciate that. I know my, um, you know, I know I don't have a very good schedule, and uh, I know I also haven't been uploading videos on the main channel regularly. I've sort of been in this, I don't know how many people care to hear this, but I've, just to kind of explain, I've sort of been in this uh, spot where I'm just not sure, you know, what I'm doing with this, and I don't, with YouTube videos, and I don't really want to just, like, throw something out there just to say that I made a video. So, much like the Crunchyroll one, you know, when, when something comes to mind, I will definitely put it out there, and I just want it to be... Um, you know, what I feel is my best effort for, you know, whether or not people enjoy it, that's that's another thing. But I want to be able to feel like I did something that was my best effort. Because whenever I go and, like, try to um, just search out a topic that I, you know, maybe I'm not really invested in completely or I don't really care too much about, I feel like whatever I record just feels kind of like garbage. So I kind of have to have something that you know, I actually care about to some degree. Otherwise, it just feels like doing it for the sake of doing it. And then you become like mundane Matt, just shitting out <laughs> videos about the most irrelevant news that nobody could ever care about. And I, I really don't want to do that. Weeaboo Master Race. Didn't David say he was scared of vaginas? <laughs> I don't know if he said that specifically, but I remember the article where he said he was scared of women and stuff because he was didn't want to be accused of rape and shit like that. That was so cringy. You know, like, implying that he even had a chance to get close enough. The last stream was September 9th. Yeah, I'm pretty... I'm pretty irregular <laughs> with that. I actually wasn't planning on doing this one at all, um, but it just popped up. I was thinking probably doing something more uh, in the lines of what I did last stream where we mostly talked about um, more, I guess, it was a little bit mental health focused, a little bit uh, relationship kind of thing. Those are those are the topics that I kind of enjoy. So it's I know it's a little bit different from people that watch like Killstream and stuff, but that's what I kind of like to do. Get away from the internet for a while if you want to think of something creative. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 
I think that I think the internet is a big creativity killer because you get so caught up in stupid shit like Twitter drama. Just like this. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. This is <laughs> at the end of the day, this this doesn't matter to uh the value of my life and it's a little bit of a little bit of a time waste. You know, it's a distraction from something that I could be doing for myself. But I do feel that since there's so much money that was on the line here, that it's worth pointing out that, you know, this person, uh, you know, took all this. They ran and they never really came forward and said what exactly happened. How can you receive $10,000 if you're in danger with, you know, for your life and your family is like kind of keeping a watchful eye over you. How do you receive $10,000 and nobody find out about it and you still don't get out? I just, you know, there's nothing that, that lines up there. They need to put out some sort of evidence. It's really not that hard to not get accused of rape, David. Well, he doesn't know. He's he's very inexperienced with the with the ladies. I mean, all he has to do is offend some feminist on Twitter and then he can get accused of it. It's a train wreck we all stare now and again. Yeah, and you know, you're right. It's it's funny. It's entertaining. Um, you know, sometimes there's some valid points to be made. But when... It's like with anything. Uh, if, you know, if I just sat on my ass and, and played video games all day, that's just as bad as, you know, sitting on Twitter all day and uh, getting too involved with internet stuff to the point that you forget your real life. Monkey Jones said a lot of YouTube videos aren't art. Are any... Here's a bigger question. What YouTube videos are art? Like animation ones? I, I mean, I definitely don't think my videos are art. They're just opinion pieces, mostly. Just ask when was the last time he showered. <laughs> I, I mean, that... that I'm going to harp too much on appearances here because at the end of the day, it's not, you know, of no value to me, but... Every time that kid posts a new profile picture, he just looks progressively worse. So I guess when he says progressive in his in his profile, he's referring to the uh, the de-evolution of his appearance. There was something that I was going to bring up, and now it has slipped my mind. Oh, speaking you know speaking of video games, I don't know how many people are interested in this, but um, later on at some point today on this channel um i may stream um dragon quest 11 and we'll just just talk about whatever you know it doesn't have to be completely video game uh related but if i do something like that i think i'm going to um private the stream afterwards just because i know people didn't subscribe here for that type of content but that's just you know that's just what i want to do for fun youtube is a serious place I think that's one of the things that have sort of um, sort of t ruined YouTube. Back when it was just sort of, you know, people would upload whatever goofy video or whatever type of video they wanted, and there was no, there was no money involved. Um, I mean, sure, you could argue there was still a lot of cringy stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't a business for everybody. Now it's like everybody tries to turn it into a business. And I realize I'm saying this with a... Uh, <laughs> A Streamlabs and a, and a Patreon link on the screen. But, you know, uh, I don't try to shove those things down people's throats. They're just sort of there on the off chance that, that somebody wants to do that. Um, maybe, you know, maybe that's why... Maybe that's why I don't have as, as much uh, support. Is because I don't advertise myself too much, but... I don't want to get to that point. I don't want to get to that point where it's like all about money and you sort of let yourself become ruled by how much you're bringing in, you know, by your bottom line. Sometimes it seems like a lot of people get confined into this trap where they have to... Uh, I know somebody's going to make a trap joke now. Somebody gets confined into this um, spot where they can't really branch out or they can't be honest with their opinions anymore even if their opinions have adapted because the fans you know because of the fans of them which i hate saying i i don't think uh 
you know, for me personally, I've never called the people that watch me fans. Just just approach me like a normal person. That's yeah. that's all I am. That's all I'll ever be. I uh, I don't like the idea of of uh, creator fan, especially when it comes to this shit. Like maybe other things. I like businesses. Capitalism is good. I mean, sure, but when it comes to YouTube, I think that I think it's done more bad than good. Like it's. Don't get me wrong, it's cool that people can it's cool that people can make a living doing something that they enjoy. But uh I also think that it sucks the life out of a lot of people. I think they get to a point where they can't um they can't be themselves anymore because they're too worried about what what's going to happen to their their income. And it's a valid concern. I mean, if you if you bank on completely on this, then of course you need to keep that going, but it also takes the uh, the genuine aspect out of it. I think there are some people, you know, maybe that are able to avoid that sort of thing. Um, you know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm sure they're out there. I don't really follow a lot of personalities. Is the R-Traps gay question gay? I think it is, yeah. Lobster-based hierarchies are destined to fail because lobsters are attracted to traps. Is that like from a Jordan Peterson book or something? I feel like I've seen that. I'm I'm kidding. Soygon has Google alerts on traps too. Oh no. There's some good stuff on BitChute. I've seen BitChute. Um, it seems like it takes forever for the videos to play. I've never been able to successfully get one to play. Maybe I didn't wasn't patient enough, but I don't know how it works. Is it is it one of those websites where once you uploaded something, it's kind of there forever? Because if it is, I don't really like that. Very genuine communities are forming in the real world, YouTube. Should be a side thing, never full time. Yeah, um, I think it's hard to keep it full-time because you kind of have to with the with the way that people's attention spans work you sort of have to do um constant content now there are some people that have been able to avoid that sort of uh sink into irrelevance like um john tron you know he can go eight months without posting a video and he posts one and, and people still come back so there are people that are able to get past that, but I don't know. I don't necessarily think I'm going to be one of those people, but I have sort of come to the realization that that I can only post what I when when I feel like it rather than doing it for the sake of doing it. There was a time when I was on a schedule. Um but and I was able to keep it up for a little while. I didn't have too much of a problem with it. I never made a video that I felt that I w didn't have something to say about. So I still was able to stick to the way that uh, I wanted to do things. But eventually it came to a point where I was like, oh man, I'm kind of kind of out of topics. I feel like it's sort of, um, everything's just repeating itself because of the way the whole narrative goes where it's just the same shit every week you know somebody kind of gets outraged by something innocuous they blow it up you know people react to the people that fucking get outraged it's just the whole thing scientists car i see um celestials naming off a bunch of different types of communities and you know to be i i guess to be completely fair i can't um i can't speak for those because i don't i don't watch them um so maybe there are a lot of a lot of uh, places on YouTube that still have, you know, something that's com hasn't been completely warped. I think the uh, this is probably just more for the commentary type stuff, the opinions, the political type of shit, uh, the social justice, the societal kind of discussions, because those are the um, those are the type of things that really bring. The, the controversy, I guess. This is, those are the things that people are very touchy about. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I do watch, and I notice that, you know, the comment sections aren't complete garbage and, like, people arguing and shit all the time is, like, paranormal-type videos where they talk about, you know, different mysteries or uh, sightings of weird creatures and stuff like that. I, I know a lot of people think it's fake as fuck, but I like things like that. They're, 
they're interesting to me. But yeah, I mean, so there are, there are things out there where you can kind of just watch it and and relax and not feel like uh, everybody's butting heads all the time. The problem with free speech platforms is that they end up being dominated by radical viewpoints, since those people who aren't radicals have no reason to switch to a free speech platform. That's a pretty good point. Yeah, that's true. It attracts that it attracts that crowd because they're not really able to to um, give their points across anywhere else. Maybe that's kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, honestly, in an ideal world, I would just have all of the so-called platforms just let anybody, you know, post anything that's not illegal. But, you know, that's never going to happen. You know, there's always going to be a slant. There's always going to be somebody that's like, I own this and you can't use it this way because I don't like what you're saying. It's stupid, but that's the way it is. All right, let me check these notifications one more time. (laughs) Has high blood pressure? Nice. Actually, my blood pressure is pretty damn low. I should have uh, I should have posted my test results (laughs) in response. If I can find them, I'll do that just to be a dick. Anyway, I think. Let me check this. Oh, really? It's only been that long, huh? I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? If not, I think I'm going to end it here. Because I have uh, droned on quite enough about these topics. I I probably won't advertise it on the main channel, but I will stream here most likely later tonight, and we'll we'll be playing a game. Um, maybe, maybe if Makitan is around, he'll join me. I think I saw I, I did see him in the chat. I don't know if he's still listening, but if he's not busy, he can join. Um, maybe I'll get Necro or something like that too, and we'll just hang out. But yeah, uh, let's see. Let me just take one last look at the chat here. It's funny to me that these people get so ass mad when they could literally just ignore taunting like a normal person. Yeah, and you're right. You know, even, I guess, um, I guess we've all kind of been guilty of that at some point. And I think what happens when people get a larger following is that they become less likely to be able to ignore it all the time. Just because, um... Well, just just because they uh, get so much of it, you know, they always feel like they're constantly being needled. And now, regardless of whether we, you know, make fun of the shit, like oh, you're getting triggered and shit like that. Yeah, that's a great that's a great joke. But I really do honestly believe that there is a limit to what the human mind uh, can can handle, like the influx of different people speaking to them all at once. Because if you think about it, we've been uh, conditioned throughout history to only deal with our communities. And now it's like sort of this global thing, the internet, where everybody can speak to everybody. Uh, Peaceful Sunset, whatever you end up doing with your channel, a lot of your audience met you when you did someone a favor. So we know you're okay, people. Best of luck. Thank you, Peaceful Sunset. I will not uh, Peaceful Sunset myself. <laughs> Wait, who's going? Bye. Are you, are you headed out, Mugwort? Is that what's going on? All right. It's been a fun stream, guys. Um, I'll be back later on tonight if any of you are interested in that. And if not, I will see you on the next On Point, which hopefully will not be too long from now. So thank you, everybody, for watching, and see you next stream.